Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and welcome to my YouTube channel where I'm going to be coloring a sweet shop in colored pencils. I feel like I've done a lot of kitchens and people baking things because I like baked things. And this stamp set is especially wonderful from MFT. It's by Stacy Yakula. And it has this whole scene in one stamp. So you don't have to stamp all the little stuff on the table and the mice separately and mask things out and put all the, the cupcakes and everything. It's just all in one, which is nice. And I stamped this in a gray ink so that I could do some really, I wanted to make some simple coloring on this and I shouldn't say simple. I mean, simple colorway. I wanted to make a scene that was mostly black and white and then add some pops of color. So I started by working on the mice first just to establish what my midtones will be and a little bit of my pops of dark. I wasn't sure whether these would be the darkest element, but the thought I had for this was to have them in a kitchen in front of a huge window with just massive amount, giant amounts of sunshine pouring in. So that means everything's going to be light and bright. It's not going to be heavy and dark, which when you're doing colored pencils is a nice thing because it takes a long time and a lot of work to do a lot of filling in of a lot of that color and to make things really dark. So each one of these has their shading on the opposite side. You may notice the one on the left has the shading on the left. The one on the right has the shading on the right because the window is going to be in the middle. And the rest of the items, I'm not going to worry about the light on each one of them because they're mostly like straight on with the light behind them. So that's going to be a real easy thing. So I'm starting now first on the wall behind them. It's going to have a sink on it. That's a little towel hanging over the edge of the sink. And I wanted that to be just a, a big graphical shape behind them because I wanted to see what to do with the table. I wasn't sure if I wanted a white table or a gray table or exactly what that was going to look like. And until I got the background in, I wouldn't really know that. And once I got it in, it looked pretty nice. I'm using a lighter gray for the shadow on the ground. There's a little shadow cast by the counter that strip across. And then each one of the legs, I'm throwing a little bit of shadow as if the light is hitting the floor underneath of the table. And then this little mouse needs something to stand on. It's not, it's not showing in the picture, but I drew just a few little lines to indicate that he might have a little stool he's standing on. Or I should say she, I think they're girls. Maybe they're guys, I have no idea. And then I'll add some shadows under this other mouse and sort of make a little tail hanging off so you get the idea that that's the shadow of that. For the counter, it's really easy to just make it look like a counter by adding some handles on the cabinets and a kickboard underneath that'll be a little bit darker. And that starts to set the scene now. We've got the, the color of the cabinets themselves. Even if they're white cabinets, if there's bright light coming from behind them, they're going to be a grayish color. That establishes all of my midtones. So the table, I'm going to add my darks in it. But to start that off, I'm going to put the midtones in first on the forward side of the table, the side that's facing the viewer, because that one is far away from the window. So the light is coming from the other side. And I'm starting with a warm gray instead of a cool gray that's on the cabinets. So I get a little difference between them but I want this to all feel like it's a super white kitchen, just has lots of shadows because of the way the light's coming in. So I'm adding a little more dark in there with a darker warm gray pencil so that I can have all that detail back that I lost when I started coloring all that color that was close to the same color as the stamping. And then I'll add in some darks in the overall shadows so that that pulls the table forward from where the cabinet is behind it and just starts building up different layers of dimension across the whole picture. And putting nice dark shadows on these legs is gonna make them stand out and come forward. But I wouldn't have known how dark to make them if I had done the table first. 
That's why I did the, the cabinet first, just to see what I have to do to make that show up against it. And I think it's looking pretty good so far. I still have all that work on the table to go, but I want to get the window in there next just to make sure that I establish all of that and know how it tends to go with the pops of color that I'm going to add. So now I've got a light color. I'm using the same color that I used for the shadows on the ground. And I'm going to put sort of a kickboard that's going to be across there. And then it's going to turn into a wall going up the sides and with one single window crossbar on it so that I can keep that really simple and fresh. I'm even letting the edges of the window be soft. I'm not making them really, really crisp because when the light comes in, it's often going to be sort of fuzzy and muted around there. And I was also thinking I might want to put some curtains in there. So I left it deliberately not defined right now because that gives me the ability to decide later what I want to do with it. So now I took a fun pomegranate pencil and started adding some pops of color. And this is where my whole idea for this came from. I just wanted these, these pops of something bright and strong in the midst of this really simple, soft scene with all of these grays in it, lots of neutral colors bouncing back and forth between warms and cools. And then all of a sudden you get these like really shock pink red colors in the middle of it. And I thought that would be a really fun combination to try for my card. A lot of the little stuff on the table, I'm not necessarily even going to do much with. I didn't want to add a whole ton of colors on here. I wanted to keep it really simple. So I'm going to add a little bit of browns for the cupcakes themselves. And there's a little bowl of cherries over here, so I'll add a little bit of that. I'm going to make the little flower jar, or the flower jar, the flower bag there have some color in it. But I didn't want to add a whole ton of different colors for all these other items. I wanted to keep that simple. I put a little stripe on my towel hanging over the edge of the sink. And don't worry, the sink is still coming. All right add things in lots and lots of layers as I go. So I wanted to figure out how this table was going to look before moving on to some of the other things. So there's me adding the little bit of brown for the cupcakes and trying to figure out whether or not I really wanted to add any more of that or not and opted for a little bit of pink like I'd had on their cheeks since that wouldn't be adding a new color. And then shadows on the forward side of each one of these objects because the light is coming from that right window behind them and it just sort of made me think about doing the baking on a bright Saturday morning when I was a kid you know just when you're just in the kitchen making cupcakes and having a good time so that was sort of the mood I wanted to capture and of course since it's a sink it has to have just uh, some kind of spigot and little handles for it that's enough to communicate it without having to draw something fancy, just having that little arc, but it was a little too bright. So I took a kneaded eraser and just pressed it onto it to lighten that color up because it was grabbing too much attention. And then I did decide to add curtains and I wanted sheer curtains. So I just went in with the pink color and even went over part of the wall so you can see that they're transparent right over, over top of that. And you can see a little bit of that crossbar on the window through them and that'll make them look like they're sheer curtains and I did decide to add a little detail to them because why not uh, there's not a whole lot of detail on this picture as much as it might feel like there is there's a lot of coloring going on but aside from the stuff on the table there was really not a whole lot in the scene so it could it could handle adding some detail to the curtains themselves so we've got our little sheer curtains. Isn't that cute? This is such a fun stamp set and I'm so into sweets and food and stuff that this was just the perfect little thing for me to color. I was in just the right mood to create this sweet little scene. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. You can go pin the pictures over on my blog if you want to. 
leave a comment and let me know what you think, maybe what your favorite sweets are. And I will see you again later on. Links for the supplies are in the doobly-doo as well as on the blog. And I'll see you next time I put a video up, which you know is going to be pretty darn soon. Take care. Bye-bye.